there are things in your life I can't put a dollar value on, but they just seem way more valuable than what I paid for it. Let me give you an example. TSA pre-check. I paid $85. I went to the airport, $85 for TSA pre-check. That covers a couple of years. I don't know what it's worth. I can't sell it to anybody. There's no tangible value. But I know that I'm in a better mood when I go to the airport. I know that I can pack differently. I can wear shoes, you know, that I don't have to take off. It changes my mood. It alleviates stress. Going to the airport, forget when I'm in line, driving, packing for the airport. I don't know what TSA pre-check is worth. A hell of a lot more than $85 is what I paid for it. So what is the value of things in your life? In football, we assess value based on fantasy points because everybody plays fantasy football. So when Amari Cooper goes to the Cowboys, you're going to be like, well, unless he has like 85 catches and 12 touchdowns, he didn't do my fantasy team any good. The value is going to be different with Amari Cooper. The Cowboys right now average about 320 yards a game. That's like 26 in the league. They're like 26, 29th, 30th on all their stats offensively. Yet if 50 yards a game extra, just 50, they go from 320 yards to 370, they're in the middle of the pack. That's really successful. If the safety has to shade over to Amari Cooper, therefore allowing more running games and three to four more first downs, remember this about the Dallas Cowboys. Remember what I'm about to tell you on the Dallas Cowboys. They are 3-0. and when they score 20 points. They don't need this guy to be over the top to be successful. They're, they've never lost a game this year when they score 20. Their defense is good. They found their pass rushers. They found their linebackers. Their front seven's excellent. It's one of the best front sevens in football. If Amari Cooper comes in and doesn't reward your fantasy team, well, that's not going to be how the Cowboys deem this successful. When I drive to an airport with TSA Pre, it is no longer a series of can'ts. I can't pack that. I can't wear that. I can't do that. I can't show up then. It's a series of, oh, I can wear that. I can pack that. I can show up later. I can go run this errand before I go to the airport. Amari Cooper is going to alleviate can'ts. He's going to give you cans. When Scott Linehan drives to the airport, drives to the game, when Jason Garrett drives to practice, when Dak drives to practice, all those coordinators, all those coaches, all those players, it's now can. Oh, we can throw deep. Oh, we can run these three trap plays because the safety now shades over to the right with Amari Cooper. Like, how do you define worth? How do you define success? If you got your franchise quarterback and you got your defense and you can bring in a player who makes both better, that you go from 26th in offense to 14th, just 55 more yards, four more first downs. That's successful. I mean, don't kid yourself. If the Cowboys made that field goal against Washington on Sunday, they'd be four and three, and you'd be looking at this deal going, hell yeah, we got, a, we got our guy. But they're three and four, and everybody's like, Ugh. by the way, have a bye this week? That's a perfect time for Amari Cooper to come in. They got a bye. Learn the playbook. Had a buy by, by the way, his last week in Oakland had a buy. So he got two week buy. He's healthy. He can learn the playbook. And oh, by the way, next game up, home, Monday night football, extra rest against Tennessee, not a good road team, and also struggling in the secondary. So just, just I don't know how to put a dollar. Everything can't be like, well, this this guy's worth this and this guy's worth that. I just know in my life there are things like TSA pre-check that I paid 85 bucks for, and it feels a thousand times more valuable than that. And Amari Cooper is going to show you real value. You're not going to find all of it on your fantasy team. You get a safety to shade over. Ezekiel Elliott can run three more trap plays that they couldn't run before because the box is jammed because nobody, nobody fears their you know, perimeter weapons. It may be 50 yards a game. It may be three first downs. But I, I'll double down. I think he's going to work. I think you're going to be happy with it. So John Gruden yesterday, uh, he likes to talk in the microphone. He's very good at it. He's, you know, he and Mike Tomlin and John Gruden are fun to listen to with the microphone. They're like, they're, they're, by the way, if Mike Tomlin ever gets fired, network, hire him. He's greater to Mike. Gruden's greater to Mike. Most of these coaches are the pits. They're boring. It's cliches. Tomlin's a home run, and Gruden's as good or better. He was talking yesterday about Derek Carr and trades. If it, all I'll say about this is, um, 
be very careful about trading him. Okay, I, I want to give you an example. John Elway's dad was a coach. He grew up in a football family. He went to Stanford. He ran an arena football team after playing to a league title. Steakhouses, car dealerships, super successful businessman. Oh, yeah, he was the greatest quarterback that ever played until, like, Montana and, uh, you know, Brady. I would say that's qualified. I'm not saying John Gruden's not. John Elway's as qualified a man in America to figure out who's a good quarterback. He played with him. He was. He ran another league, and he drafted Brock Osweiler, got into a bidding war for him, thankfully he lost, drafted Paxton Lynch, and gave a bunch of money to Case Keenum. His number one hit was recruiting Peyton Manning, who he didn't have to scout. He already knew he was great. He just had a good dinner with him at one of his steakhouses, and Peyton Manning's like, you're a Hall of Famer. I'm going to be a Hall of Famer. I'm going to go play with the Broncos. So he's a great recruiter. John Elway struggling on the quarterback thing. Be very careful about giving up Derek Carr. Let me give you an example. Marcus Mariota, Jameis Winston. They're not as good as we thought they would be, are they? I'm out on Mariota, and I'm about two bad games and another bad decision by Winston being out on him. By the way, Wentz is way better than we thought. Uh, Mahomes is way better than I thought. Uh, Russell Wilson is way better than I thought. This quarterback thing is hard. Kirk Cousins was drafted in the fourth round. RG3 in the first by the same team. Would you have guessed RG3 out of the league? Kirk Cousins, highest paid quarterback in the league for about six months. Would you have guessed that? This quarterback thing, even when you have them in-house, Forget drafting him. Blake Bortles is in-house. And Tom Coughlin's like, I think we should give him a contract extension. Six games later, Tom Coughlin's like, what the hell was I thinking? That's when you got him in-house. You have film. You, you know him. You see him at practice. This quarterback thing is hard to figure out. I mean, think about it. When I say to you, top 10 quarterbacks in the league, you get to about number six and you're, you start adding qualifiers. Well, I like... Matt Ryan, but you know he can't. He didn't have much of an arm. I like Matt Stafford, but he doesn't have a signature win. You know, I like Andrew Luck, but he throws a lot of interceptions. I, you know, I like Cam Newton, but he's not much of a precision. That's by about number six in the league. By about number six, he, he, there are things you don't like about him. Derek Carr's good. Derek Carr's really good. Derek Carr walked into this league awful for a year. Then they got it rolling. Had a very good offensive line. A little bit of a running game. He was real good. And then the Raiders did what the Raiders do. There's all sorts of dysfunction and chaos. But this, this is all you need to know. The five best quarterbacks in the NFL, I'm going to give them to you arguably. Tom Brady, sixth round. Russell Wilson, third round. Drew Brees, second round. Big Ben, third quarterback taken in his draft. And Aaron Rodgers plummeted to the 24th pick. So all the general managers in the league, those are the five best. Most of them went to non-football powers. So don't kid yourself. Even when you get the guy in-house like Derek Carr and Blake Bortles, it's hard, man. This quarterback thing, John Elway, by the way, did you hear the story about John Elway yesterday? He had to release his backup, Chad Kelly. <laughs> There's another guy he whiffed on. Chad Kelly kicked out of high school team, kicked out of his college well, team. No, it's not, not like they used a very high pick on that one. No, but I mean, it's hard, like, there's certain things that are easy in the NFL. Like, like quarterback is, even when you have him in-house. This is what I was talking about yesterday, though. I don't understand it. It is not necessary for you to say that you're never going to make any moves. No one expects that. Literally no one. The fans don't expect you to not make any moves. They actually usually get mad at you if you don't. Yeah. Don't say you're not going to trade anyone. It doesn't yeah. make any sense. Just, just don't. You, there, you, I talked about this earlier this week. Baseball managers and NBA and hockey coaches, there are so many games, you can kind of say whatever you want at the podium, and it, does, it just disappears into the ether. You have a game the next night. When a football coach talks at his weekly presser, that's the only time he talks all week, and we will micro-analyze it. Gruden came from television. He's a talker. He's highly verbal. He's wildly entertaining. He's a confident speaker, and the more he talks, the more trouble he gets in. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.